Hi and welcome today. I want to use this color scheme to create a background for some text or artist trading cards. This is my color sketchbook where I paint down different color combos and do some mixing and exploring. I really like that um, because it always gives me new ideas for for color combos and I am often surprised how much you can do with just five colors plus white. I grabbed a watercolor paper, it's the Canson XL and I'm starting with some scribbly lines and of course I'm picking colors that are matching my color scheme. This is the Durvand Intense pencil. It's water soluble and I just scribble it over the page to create some texture on the background and just to get rid of that white. I think it's always a bit difficult to start an abstract spread and that's, I think, a really easy way. I will now go on top with some acrylic paints and this is just a leftover paper that I will use later for collages. I have printed one of the stamp sets to it to see um, how the stamps turn out. And these papers are great to use them as a paint palette. I just use a simple scraper that is normally used in the kitchen to um, apply the paint to my surface. Here I just picked a newsprint paper to lay it under, under my watercolor paper so I can just go over the edges without having a lot of mess on my desk. You will find all the colors that I'm using in the video description and you will also find some details over on my blog and can have a look at the photos. I will let this dry before I go on top with a layer of the warm colors because I don't want to mix them as this will create mud. I will now go in with the warmer tones and I just mix the paints kind of intuitively. I really love that Naples yellow with the cadmium red and white. It gives such a nice peachy color. I use different methods to apply my paints. As um, you saw, I started with the scraper and here I'm using a brush. I have the feeling when you use different ways to apply paint and also different mediums, you will get more depth in your painting and I think that's essential when you are painting abstract um, as with a realistic painting you always can build depth with perspective and with an abstract painting you need some kind of tools to create that uh, depth and this is for me building different layers with different mediums or tools to create various textures and also I try to have a big range of tonal values so having some really light tones and also some really dark ones.
and I will just um, get rid of that leftover paints by painting them all over my collage paper and this paper is gorgeous to use it for future projects. I let the background dry completely and I also turned around my spread to just get a different view on it and here I'm scribbling the new color crayons to create more mark makings and texture. If you like abstract painting and maybe want to try this or something similar with watercolors, I'm running a workshop over on the Etcher Studio website, which will be in June. I will give you a link um, in the video description and there you will find all the details. If you don't know Etcher, it's an, a company from Australia. They are offering different art supplies and sketchbooks and they also are running a learning platform which is Etcher Studio. They have already hundreds of really amazing workshops about um, watercolor painting, illustration, drawing and I really enjoy their page and you also find a lot of classes or demos on their YouTube channel. There's also a demo for my abstract watercolor painting class. Here I add some stamping to the background using a stamp from the Pencilworks number no. 4. It's a set that is also available as a clear stamp set. And talking about stamps, I want to mention that we will be on holidays um, from June 1st to June 14th or 13th. I don't have the end day in mind, um, but there will be no shipping in the shop. So you can place an order, but you have to wait until we are back from our vacation. I do a little bit more stamping using a dark blue ink. I just try it here because this ink pad usually is a, a bit dry. I don't know why. I think I'm re-inking it all the time. I'm using colors that I have already on my page. I would not use any different color. I'm filling those areas where I think that it's a bit too empty and I always have in mind that I plan to cut this sheet up so this hasn't to be a full piece of art it has to be cut apart so I need a lot of texture going on otherwise I will get boring smaller pieces here I wanted to add in some turquoise circles with one of the pencil mark stamps but that ink, it stays on. I don't have in mind which color it is, but it's so uh, weak and it seems a bit liquidy and it doesn't stand out on my page. So, well, that was not necessary. For my final layer, I want to add some dripping with acrylic ink and I'm using the white um, ink from Schminke. I add a little bit more water so that I get more flow. You have to be careful when you are spritzing the ink with water because you can create a big mess all over your sheet of paper when you're doing this too, too hard. Or in the wrong place. I really like these white um, white lines against the colorful background.
I'm adding in a little bit more of the white just by blending it in with my finger. This has to dry for a while before I can work with the background. I will now um, look at the background where I want to cut my tags and what is left over for the artist trading cards. And I just have a look through my die that I want to use to see which image looks good. You can also create yourself a viewfinder with some cardstock that will make it a bit easier to find out the good areas. I have already cut my two tags and two artist trading cards and I will show them to you soon. I just um, preparing my main images and this is one of the holiday houses and I decided to stamp it to that paper that I've created besides the background and I'm stamping it to the pink area. I will then cut it out and use it on one of the artist trading cards. I will also stamp that house directly to the card so I can cut out just the house itself and have the palm tree um, directly on the background and I will then color the tree in separately with some markers. And I'm using this piece here because it has a lot of white and um, that can be covered up, I would say. Here I'm just realigning my stamp to the grid lines of the acrylic block to make sure I will stamp that house straight. It's a bit far away, so I'm just zooming in so you can see it a bit bigger. And here you can see one of the tags. I'm really happy with this one and I plan to stamp this girl from the Believe in You stamp set directly onto the tag. I'm always a little bit afraid when I add an image directly to the finished piece especially if it's the main uh, image. Um, I'm using VersaFine Clear because I know that this stamps best and gives you the darkest impressions and so I think um, I can't go wrong with that. But if you're using this ink over acrylic paint, you have to let that dry a few hours. I 
I will now also stamp some words. I think it's from the same set or maybe from the set with the other girl we have. It's the This Is Me. I will add all the sets I'm using today in the video description. And this should be my main focal text, I would say. And I'm stamping it to some of the leftover paper from the background. And I will also stamp it directly to my tag as kind of a background texture. I really like that, but I feel that something is missing on the top of the tag, so I will add um, some, something similar with a different word stamp to the top. I'm just changing my stamp. I adhere my stamps with a glue stick to the acrylic blocks. This glue can be easily wiped away after you are done with stamping. Um, just with a wet wipe, um, I usually leave the glue until I have a super thick um, layer of glue on my stamp and then I crack the glue and peel it off. But I usually recommend clean your stamps after you've used them. It's better. I'm happy with this. I will lay this aside and finish it up when the ink is dry. And let's go over to the other tag I've cut from that sheet of paper. I'm stamping images from the craft collection number one. I really like these leafy images and I felt that they fit perfect to this tag. I'm really sorry that I'm a little bit out of focus. I'm using also the Versafine Clear so I get a really good um, solid impression of the image. This also must dry for a while. I'm trying to highlight the face of the girl a little bit with um, pastel pencils, but um, they don't work really good over acrylics. Well, it works a little bit and I just want to highlight the face a bit more. Here I'm using a Tombow marker to paint in the lips and I will also use Tombow markers to paint the palm tree of the artist trading card but I plan to use um, the alcohol markers because alcohol markers work better over acrylics. Here I'm cutting out the words that I am adhering to the tag.
for the second tag I found a little um, birdie in my stash that I had already stamped to watercolor paper and also painted in with watercolors and I thought that the colors are perfectly for the background and so I decided to use this bird for this tag and I will also add some stamping just like I did it to the other tag and here I'm using stays on as it dries pretty fast and I'm not afraid to get a bad or uneven impression because it's just a background. Here I'm stamping also a text that I want to add to the tag later. It's a bit tricky to adhere everything with that glue stick. A wet glue would have worked a bit better, but I would just lay it in between some books to make sure that everything adheres well. And as I told you before, I'm going in with some markers to color the palm tree and that little greenery from the stamp. And I'm using the Tombow Pro uh, markers. These are all gold based and they were great over acrylics um, you have to be a bit careful with the ink that you've used for stamping so don't rub over the lines um, then they will bleed but if you just quickly color in the image um, you won't ruin it I have also cut out that house and I've cut out the green parts um, on it and I will adhere this directly into the stamped image. I felt that it looked a bit boring so I decided to go in with orange and paint in that house. I think this looks much better. I'm going to also do some text stamping with the words happy place on the ATC and that's all I'm doing. And here are all my finished pieces. I have one ATC background left and I will finish this up um, soon and share it as a little quick process video over on my Instagram page. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Bye!